Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Simply Nerdy. I'm your host, Stephen. I'm joined today by David and Anthony. Hey, everyone. And today, we're going to be talking about our most anticipated games of 2023. Um, I'm going to go first just because I have a little one I'm, I'm holding right now, and he may or may not explode any second. So I'll just kind of breeze by mine. My first game I'm going to talk about is Hogwarts Legacy. Now, this is a love letter written by fans for the fans. Um, the attention to detail from the books, movies, and music and more is uncanny, um, especially the common rooms. I'll just touch on that for a second. The common rooms, they, as in the developers of the game and the designers, they read the books extremely carefully and any detail they could pick up from the books, it's in the game. And same thing kind of with the John Williams music. Um, they took the music that John Williams wrote and they didn't want to damage it or, or contaminate it in any way. They wanted to take what he wrote and apply it hundreds of years prior. They kept bits and pieces of the tunes so you could hear a couple of melody notes and be like, oh, I recognize that. And then it'd be gone. It's like an early version of each of John Williams' songs. So it's kind of cool. Um, and claim to fame, Rachel knows one of the cellists that was playing in the studio for that game. So hello, I don't remember your name, but I'm Rachel's husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, also, I pre-ordered the digital deluxe edition for the PlayStation 5, and I could not be more excited. Give me the game now. Then I've got Tears of the Kingdom. Obviously, it's the sequel to my favorite video game of all time. It is very much up to the challenge of topping its predecessor. It's extremely ambitious. I have no idea what the crap is going on. I cannot wait. When can I pre-order? Nintendo, I can't pre-order it yet. Give it to me. I don't know, Steve. You might be the only one excited for that game. <laughs> I know. No one's talking about it. I know. Don't worry. We will talk about it a lot more later on our channel. Just stay tuned. Spider-Man 2. Marvel's Spider-Man and Spider-Man Miles Morales are my absolute favorite PlayStation 5 games. I have 100% completed them both. We know very little about this sequel. Spider-Man 2, but they're bringing in my favorite anti-hero, Venom. So when can I pre-order? <laughs> Show me the dotted line. Yeah, um, I'd say that's a, a good sign that you're most anticipated, that you're like ready to pre-order any second. <laughs> uh -huh. That's two games now, so let me pre-order, take my money. <laughs> um, Horizon Forbidden West, Burning Shores. I Wait, need another what? Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores. This is a DLC? This is DLC. I need oh, another excuse no. to boot up the game. And Anthony, this will do it. This is DLC. It's coming. The base game, I, we already talked about it, but the base game was absolutely brilliant. And I loved every minute. This DLC pack is going to pick up right where the main campaign left off. Really? We, we know basically nothing about this DLC, but I hope it answers some of the questions left behind after the main campaign. Huh. So, when can I pre-order? Wow, <laughs> I, I don't know how that one flew under my radar so so successfully, but that one's definitely going on my list now. Uh, oh, yes. Um, Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I absolutely love the first game. It was a complete surprise. I did not think a good Star Wars game could come out of EA, but it did. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I ate my words on this one. <laughs> uh, the mechanics for the first game worked very well, and it looks like the second expands and builds upon the existing systems in fantastic ways. So, uh, when can I pre-order? <laughs> um, the last one I, I got to talk about is Pikmin 4. We, All right. We, Anthony, can you guess this? We have waited nine years for a 34 second trailer for Pikmin 4. <laughs> and we'll have, uh, we will have the same view as the Pikmin for the first time, and I'm stoked. But other than that, we know basically nothing. And those are my most anticipated games for this year. So what Dang, do you guys think? Well. That's a good list, wow. Steve. It's a really solid list. I, I'm sitting there being like, wow, I did not prepare as well as, as Steve did. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> That there's sounds awesome. There's definitely a lot of overlap with me too, with uh, yeah. particularly with Tears of the Kingdom. That was uh, it's a game where when they announced it, 
I was excited because I was like, oh, that's a direct sequel to Breath of the Wild. That means we'll get it in like two years. But that obviously didn't happen. What actually happened <laughs> no is that's been <laughs> what actually happens it's been one of the longest gaps between Zelda games ever. So Anthony and Lisa, you were right. Fine. You can have it. Anthony and Lisa called it. They said, nah, it's not gonna be that fast. And uh alright, fine. Fine. It's a Zelda game. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. And if you think about it, yeah, they're reusing a lot of assets based on what we've seen, but uh, um, it does, it does they're, they're still there's... trying to make a follow-up to one of the most well-beloved games of all time. So My favorite video game pressure. of all time. And yes. until recently, Anthony's favorite video game of all time. Well, mm. it's it, it's more nuanced than that. <laughs> it is. Mm-hmm. Yes. Even you get that little no smug face off you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, well, I hope for Tears of the Kingdom, I want it to be at least as good as Breath of the Wild. There are things that, if they change, it will automatically be better for me. And that's the <laughs> the brittle weapons. <laughs> We've, we recently had like discussions between ourselves about that. I'm, I'm pretty against the brittle weapons. I tolerated them, and the game was amazing in spite of them. But Tears of the Kingdom will be better without them <laughs> without weapons that that break like tree branches every time you swing them, so i i think we're all agreed that the way at least the way i look at it is this i won't miss a durability system if there isn't one but i'm also fine with them keeping it as long as they do the following things first of all the weapons are not nearly so brittle as they were in breath of the wild Two, there's a gauge that tells you exactly how much durability they have left, or maybe even a number, something other than just, it's brand new, it's somewhere in between, it's about to break. It's broken. You know, and then you can repair weapons. Do those three things, and I'm fine with a durability system remaining. I wasn't as driven as crazy by it as as a lot of people, uh, definitely not as much as David was, but no. I also won't miss it if I don't, it isn't there. No. Here's the, here's the biggest sign of how much it bothered me. Like I was obsessively collecting, <laughs> obsessively collecting Korok seeds just so I could increase my inventory, like the entire game, my weapon inventory. Was uh-huh. like, yeah, yeah. That was like my motivation for finding Korok seeds for <laughs> most of the game. <laughs> yes, I agree with Anthony. I think even if there was just only the option to repair them, that might have been enough for me. Even if it was still brittle, but I was like, oh, it's starting to break. I'll just fix it, you know. <laughs> That would have that would have helped. They kind of did that with the master sword, but it was the only weapon that way, so that was kind of annoying. I mean, I guess you could reforge the champion weapons, but that was a lot more expensive and not worth it. I thought. Yeah. And that's it. Well, room for improvement. Easy, yeah. easy, easy win for Tears of the Kingdom if they change that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Anyway, so the point is, Breath of the Wild uh, is argu- arguably still. You know, it's it's one of my most favorite games of all time. I'll put it that way. And to be getting the sequel and to be getting it uh, so, you know, it's going to be near my birthday. It seems like a very, very happy gift for me. And I'm really happy about that. So I I kind of screamed a little bit when they when they showed the date. And I was like, oh, my gosh. So you know, with- I'm pretty stoked. It's it, it looks like it is set to be pretty i i feel like it has a pretty good chance of of standing up to breath of the wild and i agree steven uh switching tracks uh the other one he mentioned pikmin 4 i uh am a recent fan of the series i guess <laughs> i've only played pikmin 3 but... i actually am in the same boat as david for the record yeah. i've only played pikmin 3 pikmin 3 was great though so and i'm excited about what they said they're going to change about the game. It sounds like an interesting change, so it'll be exciting to get more info on that one. And uh, a couple other anticipated games for me that I, I want to mention. Um, there's Next year's going to be a good year for like retro-styled JRPGs. There's recently announced like the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster is coming to Switch. I've been looking for an excuse or a reason to replay Final Fantasy VI in particular. So that's one that's pretty anticipated for me. I'll probably end up buying that on Switch. And then there's a couple indie ones that just uh, look amazing. Uh, there's one called Sea of Stars. It looks like a spiritual successor to like Chrono Trigger. The pixel art is beautiful. 
it, it's amazing <laughs> they even have like a night and day cycle where like the pixel shadows are like move around in dramatic ways i don't know wow. it just it looks really good sea of stars then there's like one called ayudin chronicles 100 heroes or something like that that i've heard a lot of hype about and uh recently suikoden i think is the name of the games or is it suidoken yeah maybe that Yes, I've never played the original games, but uh, I saw that they're doing some remakes or remasters of uh, of, the, of one and two, I think, and people are pretty hyped about that, saying that they're some of the greatest JRPGs from from their era. So it sounds like one that I'll have to watch out for. So several like really awesome looking retro JRPGs that I'm going to be watching out for. See how they get reviewed. All right, so <clears throat> I will go into my list then. So um, probably, I think the one that's coming out earliest next year for me that hasn't already been discussed is Fire Emblem Engage. But I also like some of the new directions. I mean, I, I don't think that it's looking like it has the strongest story in the world. <laughs> and the main character is a little goofy looking, but uh, um, I like the idea of uh, the engage system, how that seems to work based on what we've seen so far. And uh, I don't know, it just, it looks like, it, it looks like they brought an extra level of polish. And I know we've discussed this already, but you know, polish to um, animations and uh, you know, just kind of the graphics in general. And so, I don't know, it looks really solid. So I'm excited for that one. I have never played a Fire Emblem game. Not even three, the recent one, Three Houses. I'm pretty interested in this new one. I know that you said that the story seems a little light or something, <laughs> uh, not too not too much depth, but I know it seems more accessible to me for some reason as a newcomer to the series than Three Houses did. You know, I do like turn-based strategy tactics games, but I've never played Fire Emblem, but maybe this could be a first one for me. I think it should. It looks oh, really solid. Oh man, Dave. So next on my list is Octopath Traveler 2. I really enjoyed the first game. I'm I'm a huge fan of, you know, traditional JRPG games and I thought that they had a lot of really good systems that went into it. I think probably my favorite addition to the original Octopath Traveler was the break system because oh my heck, all of the sudden stave users can actually contribute. You know, it's not just like, oh, I don't have any MP left to do any heals. I guess I'll just, you know, swat this enemy and, you know, give it a, a bruise or, you know, maybe just a small welt. Anyway, now, now I can actually do something. Anyway, I, so I just thought it was good systems and, um, and you know, I, I don't feel like we know a ton about the new one. It looks like a lot of systems are kind of returning almost unchanged, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. And uh, I'm very excited about it. I knew I'm, I was I'm really looking forward to that one. I knew I was forgetting something when I was talking about how there's, it's going to be a good year for retro styled JRPGs. Uh, I forgot. Well, you, were just it, you were leaving me some material to talk about. That's, yes. what you're doing. <laughs> that's right, Dave. Save some I'm for very... the rest of us. I will. <laughs> I'm very, I am very also very excited for Octopath Traveler 2. Like the first game I loved I love the H2 Duty art style. I just want to see more and more <laughs> games uh, like new games and remakes using that. So that's one thing. And then like Anthony said, the battle system was genuinely fun with the break and boosts. Music's incredible. Fantastic. Holy crap. Um the the HD2D has looked never looked better. Like it just it looks beautiful. <laughs> they just mm. keep making it better and better. So uh I guess all the rest of these are ones that have already been addressed, but I I want to at least mention them because they're also ones I, I'm excited for. So we've already talked about Hogwarts Legacy. It looks amazing. It looks like a, you know, like Steven said, it's a, a love letter to Harry Potter fans and the Harry Potter books were some of my very favorites growing up. It, it looks it looks awesome. Looks you know well designed. Um, so far, I haven't seen anything not to like. So we've already talked about Tears of the Kingdom, basically the sequel to one of the best games ever. So you know there's no question why we're excited. One that I had forgotten about until Stephen reminded me is Spider Man Two because. You know, I agree with Steven. I think that uh, Spider-Man 1 and, and then Miles Morales were easily some of the best games I've ever played on Sony's systems. 
extremely well made, and uh, I'm I'm very excited for the sequel um, the, for Spider Man Two. I, I will also just say this one to to end. Um, I'm I'm kind of intrigued by Pikmin Four. I have not played really much of any Pikmin, and the part of the reason for that is that sometimes the central concept of Pikmin games can kind of stress me out. You see, here's my problem. I am a, when it comes to games like that, I'm a bit of a min-maxer. <laughs> and so what happens is I, I go into a level wanting to do everything perfectly. And if I don't, then I restart it and I try again and I start getting bored and I start, you know, feeling oppressed. And so, you know, I'm, I'm basically getting myself out of experiencing a fun game. So I'm, I'm curious to try that with a new one. And, you know, there's a part of me that, I mean, what little I did play of Pikmin 3 was was still genuinely fun. And if I can just rein in my uh, OCD-like tendencies <laughs> when it comes to games like that, then I'm sure it'll be a good time. So I'm definitely, I've definitely got my eyes on, on that one for next year. Yeah. So I think that's, that's probably uh, my list, at least that present for, for, you know, my most anticipated games. Um, it's looking like it's going to be a very solid year to be a gamer. And yes, don't forget that we're also going to get the Mario movie, which we're not yes. going to talk about here because we already did. But okay. uh, you can check out that video here in the card above. Before we end, yeah. I thought of two more that aren't guaranteed. Hollow Knight Silk Song. Oh, right. What? Yeah, that is, I, that is that another one. That game still exists? Yeah. Are you sure? I mean, <laughs> yes. just that, that game is about as as, as about as uh, forthcoming in its information as the as Metroid Dread was up before it finally suddenly decided to exist. Yeah. So hopefully it comes soon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, according to a very vague statement of games in the next twelve months from from like uh, the summer games fest or whatever, that means that it, ha it would be coming next year. So I don't know if I believe it yet, but. If it comes, it's it's right at the top of my anticipated list. Yeah, for sure. And who knows what's happening with Metroid Prime 4, but if it's coming to Switch, then it's got to be like next year, right? Otherwise, it's just going to be some next-gen hardware. <laughs> who know, knows I'm when almost, that thing's coming I'm out? almost thinking at this point, with how they scrapped the development, that they're shooting for next-gen Switch. And that's, Which, that's all right. By I the kinda, way... That's something we can just throw in real quick. Apparently, there are, are articles, uh, you know, from from various sources saying that the Switch Pro was real and got canceled. So that's fun. Um, <laughs> I I said for a long time, you know, I'm pretty sure the OLED would have been the Switch Pro in a not in, in a pandemicless world. Yep. But anyway, anyway, so my guess. So the, one of the articles I read said that they, they decided to scrap the development of the Switch Pro in favor of you know working on the successor to the Switch, which hopefully they're sticking with the same form factor because come on, Nintendo, do not pull another Wii U. My thoughts are just, just simply because, you know, okay, so we restarted uh, development, what, early 2019? So if you think about it, they've been working from the ground up for only almost four years. Yeah, almost four years. So, you know, I could see it taking a, a year or two more. And Teaser I trailer coming mind. soon. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, I don't logo. mind if they decide to, to uh, wait for the Switch 2 because, you know, Switch is still probably my favorite system right now, but it's, it's definitely starting to show its age. Yes. And I wouldn't mind if they finally gave it a refresh. Please give yeah. it a refresh with a successor, not a pro. And I'm glad mm -hmm. that that's, that's past this now, I hope. See that... That's the truest sign that <laughs> that it's time for a next uh, gen console from Nintendo because like Metro Prime 4 has been one of my most anticipated games since since like the Switch released, you know. <laughs> a launch title for next gen that would be a beautiful would be place. Incredible. A beautiful place for a new Metroid game, so. Well, just for, you know, nerdy pursuits in general, I'll, I'll just also sh throw a little shout out not only to the um, the Super Mario movie, which I'm super excited for. It looks incredible. But also, for all of you Sanderson fans out there, oh, the year oh, of Sanderson! This is the year oh, of Sanderson! 
I'm going to tell you, I'll tell you what, 2023 is shaping up to be one of the best years ever. It, it really is. <laughs> but one and of the best years to be a nerd. I yes, agree. for sure. <laughs> and if you are a nerd and you do like Brandon Sanderson stuff, then tune in to Technically Mexican. We're going to be on his channel New Year's Eve night, 7 p.m. We're going to be talking a lot about the state of Sanderson. It's his little update that he gives every at the end of each year. Um, there's a lot to unpack this time around. If you like that kind of thing, tune in over there um, Sunday at 7. But yeah, so thank you so much, guys. And let us know down in the comments below what your most anticipated games of 2023 are. Because like we already mentioned, there are plenty of titles to choose from. And we probably didn't even touch on all of yours. So please yeah. let us know down in the comments. Please give us a like. Please subscribe. <laughs> it always helps us out. Anthony, you want to say something? Go. Oh, I was just going to say, we probably didn't even touch all of ours. No, that's probably I, I, true. Probably, probably going to find <laughs> <laughs> And keep in mind, this is just what's been announced. Like, we don't even know. Like, there's some surprises probably in store for next year that we don't even know about yet. But I mean, I think Nintendo I loves mean, Shadow Drops now. That's true. So <laughs> that's just of what we know. So we are excited to see what this year brings, what surprises we are in store for. And you heard it here first. Until next time, guys. Keep, keep it, it nerdy. nerdy.